and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for day two of Throne of Eldraine Standard that's going to kick off with a pretty sweet looking donation deck here. That's what the two Ds up there mean. I guess I could write it over here as well. This is a viewer submitted list that we're going to try here that's uh, basically mono blue artifacts. We're splashing black for Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge. Y'all know how much we like playing Tezzeret. That plus two animation is so sweet. Uh, the claw coming on out there. So that's that's going to be hopefully what we're going to do. Um, you know, like that plus two is real. That's that's a big game. Deal X damage to each opponent where X is the number of artifacts you control and you gain X life. That's a big game. You know, you have five artifacts in play. You tick up, you do five, gain five. If you untap, you know, Tezzeret's at seven loyalty. So you untap with Tezzeret, do it again. Game ends pretty quickly. So if we're going to get that done, we got to have a lot of artifacts, right? So let's see what we got. We got some puppets in here, just being an O2 to scry one. You know, like they can, you know, just do a little blocking and everything. Um, you can, if if you need to chump block with the puppet also, you know, if, you know, it can block one power things easily, up, of course, but... If you need a chump block, you can chump block, and then before damage, you can exile it and make a 1 1. So you can make another chump blocker for you there, too. So, got some good defense with that thing, or just some good uh, ways to slow our opponent down. We got some more scry, and then wishing well, we can sack to draw cards also. Manifold key. Hey, what's up, May? Thank you so much for the, the sub there. Thanks, May. Welcome to the channel. Um,. Yeah, our Manifold Key is is just a, a cheap artifact that allows us to untap other artifacts. Hmm, what artifacts we want to untap? Well, we got the Vantress Gargoyle, also another good cheap artifact, 2 mana, 5-4. Um, you know, it can't attack immediately, but it does, you know, the opponent has to have 7 or more cards in their graveyard. But we get to mill 1 for both players with it. And then we can use our Manifold Key to untap it, so we can mill again if we want to really help turn it on. Um, and then, uh, our other thing that we're untapping and really like the, the, um, one of our strength, one of the strengths of the deck is this mystic forge. So mystic forge, you know, you can, you can look at the top card of your library at any time, cast it. If it's a artifact card or a colorless non land card. So basically this is kind of like experimental frenzy, except for you still get to play the cards in your hands. But if you can play the cards on top, if it's an artifact, well, that's like our whole deck. And that's why it's, it's really good having all these cheap artifacts. That's why we have so many ones and twos. So we can play multiple of, the, multiple of them with our Frenzy Forge here. Now, it, Frenzy allows you to play lands. Same with Bullet Citadel. All those cards let you play lands. This doesn't let you play lands. So that that's, a, um, that's where Mystic Forge is a little bit weaker than the other two. However, you do get to tap it, pay a life, and exile the top card of your library to reset if you need to reset if it's a land and so if we do that we can use our manifold uh key to un untap it and reset again if we want of course gargoyle can also um you know mill over a top card and have us reset as well um, and then whenever we're milling over cards with gargoyle we also have the emery that can recast our artifacts in the graveyard as well so a bunch of like really cool stuff that we have here. We have the Golos that that we do have the ability to activate Golos if we have a Chromatic Lantern in play. A bunch of cool little things. Um, so there we go. No, there's yeah. So there's no Dance of the Mance in this deck. We'll see if you know like while we play and everything like maybe that's a card to, to splash for. But you know we're we're focused on going Mystic Forge here. But with the the mill of Gargoyle and Emery. Maybe that's a card we could uh, have in here as well. Um, but yeah, so we're basically mono blue, sp splash black. We get to have um, some colorless lands because we're really not um, having too much color restrictions here. We only need one blue source um, for all these things. And we only need one black source for our six drop. And we also have chromatic lantern and golden egg that can even help with our mana as well, different colors. So. We don't have too much restriction there. All right, well, let's go ahead and get to our deck. Let's see how it goes. So with, um, okay, so yeah, you focus on the Tezzeret Forge plan, but Dance could give the deck another win con. Yeah, it, yeah, so Dance could be good. You could definitely see that. We'll kind of see. 
Um, so with our donation decks, always like to, we play them through a traditional standard event. Where am I at? Ooh, we're at number 11. Yeah, so we're going to go through our, our event here and um, play till we either win at five or lose two, whichever happens first. So let's get started. Hey, Jack Nolly. Yeah, Veil of Summer is so powerful. So powerful because, you know, not, like, not only is green just really good in the format, um, but having that cyborg card that's really good against both blue and black, where those are like the next two big colors, <laughs> it's like, especially, I mean, well, both, yeah, both colors, like those are the next two big colors besides green. It's just perfect. There's not a whole lot of red and white around right now. Yeah, I really like Spyglass as an answer to Oko. Yeah, I like that. I think that's a really good answer. I think Spyglass uh, definitely gained a lot of value with rotation here where um, Spyglass, because I think it is it is a, a good answer there where, where the Simic decks don't um, usually have artifact removal in them. And, uh, you know, besides like Oko, I guess, but, you know, if you name Oko, they can't use it. But last format, the what you were trying to do with Spyglass is shut down to Fairy, and there was uh, both a three mana and a five mana to Fairy that both of them could easily get rid of the Spyglass, and so uh, made that uh, uh, made having just one Spyglass not be nearly as reliable. Spyglass also stops the Wicked Wolf, at least the. After, you know, it still gets to fight and everything, but stops it from sacrificing stuff. Um, I'm not exactly sure what what's the best deck for the best of one all card event yet. I, I don't know. I kind of feel like something like the Mono Green Stompy that we're gonna play later would would work out well in that event, but. I haven't, you know, haven't played the deck yet, but that would be like my first thought of a pretty good card to play there. You're going to play Fires of Invention. Gate with Fay of Wishes sideboard. Okay, nice. The best answer to the new Esper stacks, preferably in Bant or Sultai. Well, in Sultai, is just. Do you want to just unmoor ego, Dance of the Mance, and Doom foretold? Is that the best thing to do there? What is this thing? All right, so I'm going to tap out of mana so I can activate this manifold key so I can untap the chromatic lantern. All right, we didn't really do anything with that, but that was cool. Oh, I should play the dismal backwater. Probably. Um I think I'll take the Vantress. <laughs> yeah, that was cool, right? <laughs> black white knights with corpse knight. Yeah. Uh yeah, I have a black white knight deck. Yeah. Um I haven't I haven't gotten to play it yet. Um the only two times I've played against knights my opponents have had um they, they've been playing Mardu, but I think Black White is the way to go. All right, do I want to just drop Tezzeret already, or do we just play this other Mystic Forge? I think I'll play this other Mystic Forge first. There we go. One drop. Scry one. I'd like to keep that egg, please. Egg's a good card. <laughs> I 
should just talk about that search axis actually, but um, basically I haven't played that format. I don't have a a really strong um, suggestion, but just uh, with with that being said, I I'm kind of. I'm excited to play like the mon like whenever we play the mono green at Stompy later. I could see that being a deck that I would like to play in that format. All right, we'll get rid of that thing. Hmm, another one. Now that's this should strike fear in that's some good quality magic right there, that claw. Bzz, bzz. Yeah, I kind of forgot the Castle Vantress was going to come into play. Tapped, not untapped, TBH. All right, that'll do. It doesn't matter what we use as far as like what mana because we have the Chromatic Lantern in play anyway. Wait, so this can't block unless I have four cards in hand? Okay, well. Oh, what, what lands are you tapping here? I'll tap this and tap that. Oh, it only costs one mana? Because our creatures have affinity for artifacts? Well, that's cool. Oh wait, I can't actually cast that. That's not a it's not a colorless card. Oh, wait. Ah, man. I'm already messing up. I was going to keep that island in hand so I could have two cards in hand. Because I was going to crack the cryptic caves and draw another card. Wow. Golos is free. That's broken. Oh, I need to cast this golden egg. Can I, can I say no? Yeah, it's a May. I can decline. Awesome. Oh, I don't have the mana. Right, it's not free. I just cast the Golos for free. <laughs> All right, well, maybe I should have not declined. Oh, well. Um, it's a pretty good turn. Pretty good turn. Right there. One, two, three, four. I'm still gonna, I definitely want to keep this egg in here, though, to be able to play later. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight, nine. Just plus, do nine. All right, that was pretty sweet. All right, we're crushing it. Yeah, we need to hatch the egg into a creature. Okay, Bill and Kenrith is a brawl commander. I like it. Um, maybe, maybe you can get to five colors with the mana and, you know you can play a card like golos or something that helps helps uh helps get there you you probably want to be pretty heavy on like two to three color and then splashing the other two or three after that so i'd, I'd recommend focusing on some you know, and probably you want green as a base color that can help fix everything else. You know, you can have, like, circuitous routes and stuff like that. Circuitous routes, uh, you know, you can have chromatic lantern and... Ah, that thing's free.
Oh, Deckmaster, thank you. I'll get Deckmaster up here in just a minute. All right, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, I don't think they can sack that and gain three life in response, but just in case, you never know. Just play another one of these. We'll play one of these. Might as well better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. That is the sound of your wow. This is pretty sweet. All right. Well, that was cool. Um, so we could, we could play Soot. <laughs> Firing my laser. <laughs> Zap. Yeah, Tezzeret's awesome. Um, so we could play Soot, because they're playing creatures. That would make sense. What would we want to cut for Soot? Do I want this renowned weaponsmith? Two mana, one three, tap, add two colorless mana to cast artifacts. Do we really need that? Probably not. I kind of want to, I, like, I want to cut a creature with us bringing in this Soot. All right, looks good. I guess I mean I could play Noxious Grasp also. I don't I don't want to like cut too much of our our game plan though. Noxious Grasp would probably come in for Lantern. And I'm just gonna play the sets. We'll see what happens. We may, we may get Questing Beast did though. Questing Beast sounds really annoying to deal with. Now that I think of it, that card sounds like a problem. Yeah, we keep this. We got the puppet and Scry one to look for another land. Isn't Wanda Vertebrae better than Manifold Key? I don't know. Let's see what Va Wanda Vertebrae does. If that was a tap land, or sorry, an untapped land, I'd probably want to keep it. Is that the name of the card? What's going on, MTG bot? That thing's big. All right, one mana artifact, tap, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Tap two, tap, exile it, shuffle the five cards from your graveyard into your library. No, I don't, I don't think that that's, we're not, we're not too much of a self mill deck. But I guess that kind of resets, um, I guess, yeah, so that resets by milling one, that, that resets the, the manifold key. Or, sorry, that resets the other thing. Um, I'll block with you. I'm just going to block with you. All right, good block, Puppet. That thing doesn't have trample.
Yeah, but Manifold Key can also do other things besides just reset. Um, where that other card, basically all it does is kind of reset. Like this, like you still get to, you know, like there's times like you're going to like attack with your 5-4 and then untap it. Uh, kind of thing. So you can play it like on offense and defense and like with other creatures. And um, there's just more things you can do, I think, with this key. I know playing Emery before Ritual of Soot's not great, but we have a backup Emery also. That's a pretty generic question. Any thoughts on Bant? And that can, there are tons of different things you can do in the Bant colors. Um, there are a lot of good Bant cards. This curse, this from it. I don't. I need them gone. Gone! Try not to lose your head out here. This great hand is a little annoying. One, two, three, four, five, two. Actually, I'll take this golden egg, actually. Hey, Zedalom. Good afternoon. <clears throat> yeah, because Golden Egg we can play with Golos. Hmm. Let's get this mobilized district. Yeah, we got the fibble tip sleeve. We were born for the hunt. Yeah, this this wasn't a deck I put together. This is a donation deck I put here, so this this wasn't a, a deck I, I put together at all. What our what our deck's premise is. Um basically to kill people with Tezzeret Master Bridge. Get a whole bunch of artifacts in play. And kill them with Tezzeret Master Bridge. And so Tezzeret and then Mystic Forge are our two key cards. I don't have any removal for the Great Henge, do I? Like even in my sideboard? Oh yeah, so many good cards over here in our opponent's deck. Do get to start activating Golos here soon. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I'm two mana short of casting Ritual and activating Golos, so I think I just want to cast the Ritual. Get rid of this Yorvo. So we'll do that. Getting course use their Garrick to kill my Golos again. Yeah, we could get Blast on up to nine to destroy the Great Henge. Um It's kinda looking like I should play Spyglass for Garrick. Rude. 
Looks like you weren't fit to survive. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good combo there. Zedalon. Uh, Soren and Iron Crag Pyromancer together. Um, so then what else is there in Mardu for card draw? There's got to be black card draw spells. There's like the new... There's the new sign in blood that costs three mana. It's like, you know, it's three mana. It's divination. It's draw two. Lose two life. And then you spend like three black to cast it. You like do something else. Yeah, you can choose if you'd like a cat or a fox. Right now. So yeah, you, there's multiple pets. <laughs> you cannot run or hide. Hmm. Don't like our chances of winning this. Them being so far ahead on on the battlefield and having another six cards in hand. Uh, still don't like our chances of winning this. We have 11 coming through here. No matter how I make a block. I can sack a golden egg to, to gain three. Now I, I can't activate. can't play Golos and activate Golos anyway. All right, I'm going to give him this one. So maybe Spyglass isn't very reliable. They're playing that thing, whatever that thing was. That thing that kills lots of stuff, Casualties of War. Should I just play like a couple of Negates? I liked it better whenever we had Mystic Forge in play. Mystic Forge and Tezzeret. <laughs> we didn't have either that game. I'm going to get rid of the Manifold Keys and play a couple of Negates. All right, maybe we should play these grasps also, actually. Ritual didn't look real great. It was okay. They have a lot of more expensive stuff, though. But if I cut it, they're probably going to get all their cheap stuff again, though. Don't want to go down on too low of artifacts. Yeah, but... Yeah, Legion's End does get the Voracious Hydra. They also have, like, the Yorvos that can be real big that we have to be worried about. All right, I think I am going to shock turn two to play Vantress Gargoyle. I don't think I need to 
play a shock land and play this witching well on turn one even though i guess if i do that it's likely that i hit get an untapped land for turn two for the gargoyle so is that worth it no not really I want the gargoyle down as early as possible to start putting cards in my opponent's graveyard. It's tough because I do need five lands. Oh, right. Now I don't get to activate Gargoyle. Hmm. I don't think my opponent's playing a spell here that I want to negate. Don't get a block. Please don't kill my Mystic Forge. What's up, numbers? Thanks for the tier one sub yet again. Thank you so much there, numbers. Wow, no fear. All right, rewarded. I don't get to block. Mm, all right, I guess we draw this. I could have exiled it with Mystic Forge to try to hit the land drop. Man, this is awkward. I want that land, but I want to activate Gargoyle. Oh, right. Why was I thinking my Gargoyle just wasn't going to die? Playing with cards for the first time. <laughs> First time for the cards. No, I couldn't. I couldn't block with the gargoyle. Oh, but if if you could block with the gargoyle, yes, you you have the ability to block and then assign the ability. Yes, you are allowed to do that. Or like you could you can block and then use then tap and use the ability there. If I could have blocked with gargoyle. Hmm. All right, got another Tezzeret on top. Hey, Hydus. I would like a turn of like playing a couple artifacts off the top and then um, holding up negate. And honestly, maybe I should have just held up negate here. Okay. Gargos. Things an eight seven, which is really big. Want to mine some chump blockers. 
Hmm. It doesn't let me keep negate open, but it does give me a backup forge if they kill and if they destroy the forge. Affinity means it costs less mana. So there you go. It's you can see it on the right hand side. There. Costs one less to cast for each artifact I control. Well, so much for having to gate up. Life. We gotta find something for this Hydra. I know what can you find? That's not it. Need to find Noxious Grasp. So I could get Noxious Grasp with the egg. I could have the puppet block the Gargos. I don't think I played this, these last two games too well. I don't know. I feel like I didn't. I feel like I didn't, but I don't, I don't know. These creatures are really big. Green creatures are so big. Shouldn't have cast the Ritual of Soot when I did. Should not have cast that. That helped my opponent out. Hmm. So it's just all mana. We have the Vantress that can help us scry as well. The thing about Mystic Forge doesn't help you hit land drops, so I like having land drops. I'm kind of relying on this Vantress here a little bit. Yeah, I've played, I've played, um, I said oops and then conceded. They may just, they may realize they had the wrong deck. I've done that. Or maybe they just kept a one lander and didn't draw a land. It's so unfortunate that like all the good cyborg cards are like spells. Like then we have to put a bunch of spells in to make our other cards worse. Because we're playing all these spells. We don't need ritual of set in this matchup, actually. Do you know if we need Legion's End? Can we just block? We got some things that can block. All right, we'll take out the keys for a couple legions ends. Oh, I'm sorry, Brew.
Sorry to hear that. That first game we played was really awesome. I want to play another game like that. <laughs> okay, Castle of Antris. See, good thing I didn't sideboard too much for mono red, you know, bringing in like. Uh, the Ritual of Soot's where I don't want Ritual of Soot against an Electromancer deck. You better hope you delay our quest no further. Let us plan for the trials ahead. The problem with having all these cheap cards is we haven't been able to block with the Gargoyle too well in general. I will learn what nobody yet knows. Royal Science has looked awesome in this deck. Just played against this, you know, played against Phoenix one time yesterday, but it looked really impressive. Huh. I guess we're just playing Fry main deck now. That's the card in particular. It looks really good. I don't... I'm... I kind of don't like Phoenix in these decks, though. Like, I like they're playing, you know, playing Pyromancer and Royal Scions and stuff. Like, there's too many, there's too many non-spells in this deck for Phoenix. We can't play anything like right away with Mystic Forge anyway. I'm gonna wait till we get to Golos first, even though if I had one more mana, I probably would not have even played this and just played Blast Zone to like put two counters on it to be able to blow it up and kill the Scions and Pyromancer. So I should probably just do that here is just play Blast Zone. Yeah, sure do have a Discord. Hey, Lucius. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Get that blast zone to three as soon as possible. So they only got two other cards over here. But, you know, playing the blast zone last turn, we wouldn't have been able to add two counters. And then my opponent just kind of knows about it, can play around it better. Certainly not good. Now they have a whole bunch of more looks at two more spells. That's about the worst card we could possibly see. Oh, right. I think just gets the ultimate now. Maneuver Never mind. Position. We're just dead. And Assuming they got two spells over there they can cast, which I, I don't know how they couldn't. Um, I haven't really, I haven't looked into Cardboard Live at all, Penguins win. Do y'all like 
Cardboard Live more than Deckmaster. Wow, they did not have two more spells to get Phoenix back. They need to get Phoenix out of this deck. I upgrade for the Racto Sacrifice deck. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there are upgrades. I I don't know. I'm not like thinking like the the best right now. I'm sure there are from the new set, but I don't I don't know off the top of my head. Somebody in chat probably knows. I'll probably have something. Hmm. more lands in play. No. Cancel. Just play my land, please. Like Abzan Wolves work splashing for Oko. Yeah, you you can play four color with that with those. Yeah, you have the tools to play four colors with those for sure. Like having Paradise, Druid, and the Bird. You have enough for, for um, four color. I have not played Magic Mirror at all. All right, getting these in, getting in Spyglass for Royal Scions, taking out Legion's End again. I could have Unmoored Ego for Phoenix, but they have tons of other threats as well that I don't think that's really worth it. This Inquisitive Puppet doesn't do anything except for just be a one-mana artifact. So that's probably not worth a card. So I guess I'll play Negate and Ego, I guess. Oh, Cage. We got a Cage. Bring that in. Cage is good. So would I rather play Ego than Puppet? I don't really want Ego in my deck. Puppet doesn't have any text. I guess I could. I guess Key has more text. I guess. Legions it only has one target with the Electromancer. I guess having that puppet in play kept them from attacking with that Electromancer for a little while for some reason. Deck, don't do this to me. We kill our opponent with Tezzeret. This is not a demoralize your opponent deck at all. That's not what this deck does. But we use Mystic Forge to play a whole lot of cheap artifacts and zap him to death with Tezzeret. Hmm. I 
guess it has to be golden egg. So Weapon Smith can add two mana for artifacts. So it can add two mana for Vantress Gargoyle, but Vantress Gargoyle costs a blue mana, and it adds two colorless. You'd still have to have the blue mana to be able to cast it there. I like drawing land because Mystic Forge doesn't help us hit land drop. So I like to like have my draw step be land, and then I want to have um, artifact spells after that. Yeah, Jerk, you can also, if you want, that's, we have the Discord with lots of discussion and stuff there. So if you want to um, join the Discord there and, and you know feel free to ask questions about different decks and different deck ideas and everything there. Guess I could add this one three back to block. Yeah, I shouldn't have, shouldn't have tapped that. <laughs> it's what's up, wizard? Uh, just whichever whichever channel is applicable. You know, maybe like the bruise or deck building channel, or you know, if it's best of one or. You know anything? Just what, whichever channel is applicable. Any, any of them. I, I, I'm of course not on Discord while I'm streaming. Awesome, Wizard. Glad you're joining the Abzan Hero deck from yesterday. Happy to hear. Well, that's unfortunate having the Tezzeret on top. We're gonna have to mill it over. That's just how it is. We're not too close to casting it anyway. There's no artifacts. Can't find an artifact. So as far as cards in my graveyard, I have the Wishing Well that Emery can play. Yeah, if I had, yeah, if you use blue mana, you can have, that's a good call. With blue mana, you can have the Weaponsmith. Uh, reset as well. So how do I stop Phoenix from killing me? This thing can't block. And that's not great. It's also not great.
I don't have anything to stop a phoenix with a land, right? No. So uh, maybe just get a gain life land. All right, looking for another Tezzeret. May exile this watery grave. No, they shouldn't be general. Oh, that hurts. You may need to, yeah, maybe refresh. Yeah, you you have your it says that you're subbed there. Refresh your stream and and maybe a new a message thing will pop up. We need to find Tezzeret. Okay. There's Tezzeret. Will Wiggins with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Will. I appreciate that. So I can draw that with the Cryptic Caves. But then I'm going to need another... The problem with drawing it with Cryptic Caves is then I don't have another land drop. I could sack the Wishing Well. I guess that's, that's probably what I want to do. Draw it, maybe draw a land underneath it too. Alright, that's fine. Can I not cast this? Why did, why can't I cast that? Oh not in my main phase? Chill out here, timeout thing. I'm trying to Trying to make this work. Um, Oh. For some reason, I forgot about the Chromatic Lanterns. I got, got to cast that, too. Well, all right. That works out, though. I wasted the Scry on the Puppet. I should have done Emery, then Puppet. Uh, sorry, General. I'll, I'll count you, though. So, yeah, you just resubbed here. So, yeah, let's let's count you towards our our sub goal there. Uh, yeah, I guess Cage is a non-bow with Forge, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose it is. It stops Beacon Bolt from being played over there, too. But, yeah.
Um, Dues, uh, what's up, Dues? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there. I appreciate that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and play this Tazeret. I take what I need. Play this thing. Draw a card. Hmm. So yeah, do I actually want to play the the Graft Digger's Cage? I only have four artifacts in play right now, so my tickup's only for four. If we play it, we'll have five. But then we don't get to use Mystic Forge anymore, so that that's really rough. Um, that is pretty rough. I don't I don't think I play it. <laughs> this is just the beginning. So I have a Golos and a Wishing wishing Well in the graveyard as far as the minus three ability. We're probably going to need to keep using that plus two ability for a while. No, there's not a Phoenix over there, but they had, they just had the, oh, well, now there is. There wasn't before. They just had the Beacon Bolt, but now there is. Nice, Beck. Good job. 17 match win streak with Is It Spells. That is pretty incredible. Well, obviously, you know, got really punished for not having the Graftigger's Cage in play, obviously. You will suffer for this. We'll see if we can make up for it by playing a bunch of stuff here. Does this activate abilities of artifacts? Yes, it does. Okay. All right, now we got four cards in hand, so we can block with the gargoyle. That's nice. Yeah, there's only the one Graft Digger's Cage in the deck. Yeah, that was a nightmare turn for us, that last turn. So just three cards over there. Well, that one's an awesome card.
Hey, G Enshin. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that, GN. Thank you so much. Um. We need another Tezzeret. I think, I think we only have one Tezzeret left though. Which is the problem. We milled one over with an Emery. There's Tazeret. Fortunately, we don't have the mana this turn now. Hey, at Mayo. Aldrain's been a lot of fun. Yeah, because I couldn't activate caves and then do that. Um... Come on. I play the Graft Digger's Cage to get another artifact in play and make sure that this Phoenix doesn't come back and then there's just Lava Coil. Now I don't have Negate. Or do I have Negate? I have to, how does it... I tap this thing? How does tapping this thing give me Negate? Oh, because of the Golden Egg? Oh, never mind. So I guess I do have Negate. But then that that means that the, the two creatures kill me because then I don't have the blocker here. Uh, if I just don't play the Cage... I have the two mana for negate there. I just shouldn't have. Oh, I can't. E oh, that creature can't even block anyway because I don't have four cards in hand. Forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. That creature needs to be able to block. Not being able to block really hurts. All right, so we had some like really cool artifact stuff going on here. As we saw there, but we couldn't stop creatures at all. You know, like with the green deck and, and then even just like a phoenix couldn't... We have nothing to stop to stop creatures. And so I, I think that's like kind of like what our deck has to have. Like we have to have... We have to have removal. We don't, we don't have any removal. But I don't know how to fit removal in. I don't know where... I don't know how to have all these artifacts and stuff and have removal. Um... Yeah, the gargoyle. Yeah, the gargoyle just never gets to block, does it? Because like, because yeah, because we're we're trying to empty our like we have all these cards. We want to empty our hand, get them out on the battlefield for Mystic Forge, and then yeah, we never have four cards in hand. Because look at all these ones and twos and everything. So this thing never gets to block, does it? And that's exactly what we need. Like we need a blocker. So it's not, it's not even helping us. Um. Yeah, I like. I kind of like that. Yeah, I I feel like this has to be Esper where we have Glass Casket uh, in Esper, and then you have Dance with the Mance also in Esper, where Dance can like bring back all your artifacts that if you mill them over with Emery and stuff like that, you can bring back artifacts for Tezzeret. It, it kind of feels, yeah, because Glass Casket is really nice. Um, yeah, 
No, I, I don't want wall of lost thoughts. I don't want just like an O4. Like, so like this, this can get rid of things, but still like we saw like, they're just like bigger creatures. We like, how do we have like removal for bigger creatures? It's kind of what we need. Cause yeah, you know, like this doesn't get rid of like, like both those games, they were all four, four mana or more expensive creatures that were killing us. But like, you can just have like time wipe. Like, I, I think, like, if you just go, like, maybe, like, less of these creatures, like, less Inquisitive Puppet, and I don't, I don't know if I really like the Renowned Weaponsmith. You know, we were, our, we were on a Mold of Five, and that helped us, but I think, like, basically, you want to just be more controlling with, like, Time Wipe. Um, yeah, that's what I kind of think, like, we got to have Time Wipe, got to have, like, just be a real controlling element, because we have to stop creatures, and it doesn't really seem like we can stop creatures at all no i'm not not interested in murderous rider uh too much maybe maybe sideboard against like planeswalkers or something but like murderous rider is not an, an artifact so like i i don't really want like i want i want like big effect if it's not an artifact i want like a big effect like a time wipe i want something that can be worth multiple cards not just one for one because if we're if we're just trying to play one for one removal we're not going to have enough one for one removal to trade with their stuff and artifacts to, to do our artifact thing we need to be able to do our artifact thing and then have a few spells that are not artifacts that are worth a that are worth a, a bunch of spells um so we need we need big effects like time wipes and stuff like that um but yeah the very first game we got to play that was really awesome you know, we weren't, our opponent didn't really pressure us. They had a really slow hand and they didn't, they didn't hardly pressure us. And so we got to just sit back and we got to curve out, you know, Lantern to Mystic Forge of Golos, the Tezzeret. And Golos could sit back and, and block for us. And so, like, they couldn't get through a 3-5 on the ground. But, you know, like, the flying creatures, since Gargoyle doesn't block, we have, we have nothing for flying creatures at all. Like, just, when Gargoyle can't block, we have nothing. And that's that's really rough, at, at a spot to be in. There, uh, yeah, you could play the non-giant sweeper, but I I like time wipe more because you know like time wipe allows you to have like an Emery or a Golos in play and then pick it back up, kind of thing. Um, some of these cards y'all are saying so Shimmer Dragon I think is just too expensive. Like six, I don't want a, a six mana blocker, but does it do something incredible? Tap two on tar. Okay, yeah, it does get to tap two on tap to artifacts, draw a card. Now that's that's really nice. We can tap like these golden eggs, draw cards. Yeah, I I I'm in for a like you know a shimmer dragon or two. I'm in for that because yeah, being able to tap golden eggs, draw cards, that's awesome. The thing is, is like, like the point of like this deck that we're playing here was try to make a Mystic Forge deck. It's like that's why we have all these cheap artifacts. The problem is, is like, Manifold Key's not really worth a card. Inquisitive Puppet's not really worth a card. Vantress Gargoyle was really unimpressive, and you know, like the Lantern helps ramp you a little bit, but it doesn't trade. Like nothing here trades with our opponents. Like creatures, they can just play stuff, and then attack us and kill us, and we can't do anything about it. Yeah, Gil Globe. Yeah, like we could go Gil Globe Golden Egg. Yeah, I mean Gil Go Gil Globe could be a thing too, but that doesn't that doesn't help you stop your opponent. Again. Um Green for Oko and then food stuff. Oko really Oko does help slow down your opponent a whole lot. But I th think I'd rather have white for sweepers and stuff. Stone Coil Serpent and Enter the God Eternals. Um, Psy rotated out, yeah. Yeah, Oko is just incredibly good. Uh, Sahili can make chump blockers. I don't hate Sahili. Sahili works really, really well with Tazeret Mystic Forge. Because, like, if you have a Sahili in play when you're, like, playing, like, two or three artifacts off Mystic Forge, if they, like, all bring 1-1s one -ones into play with them, that that really adds up uh, and really helps you out. So, like, see, I really don't 
mind Sahili in a, in a type of deck like this. I like Sahili. And of course, yeah, Sahili does make artifacts. So like having having like those out. And of course, you know, like the Sahili costs two with Tezzeret because of like the affinity part thing also. Um, and yeah, Oko can make all these eggs into elks. That's true. Uh, so I don't know. There's there's cards here. Like there's cards that work well together here. The problem, and so like, the problem is stopping the opponent. And like, while while like you know like we have like like we saw that game one. That game one, our deck looked awesome. You know, we got to play Mystic Forge. Our opponent wasn't really pressuring us. So we got to just um, do our thing and play a whole bunch of artifacts and everything, then play Tezzeret and, and kill them with a few Tezzeret act activations, you know, like three activations, do the 20 damage to them. And our deck looked really cool. But the problem is whenever your opponent's actually attacking you, if you stumble at all, if you don't get to, to curve out with Forge or Tezzeret, or if they, you know, have removal for your Tezzeret, like we saw that last game, they have removal for it. Um... We don't have any kind of plan B. We don't have any kind of way to disrupt the opponent. And so if we're not disrupting them and we have no plan B and we're already a really slow deck, that's tough. That's tough. Um, so there. So Stone Coral Serpent has reach. Yeah. So there were, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does have reach you can cast it off of weapon smith to make it even bigger yeah maybe maybe we should maybe we're supposed to be playing serpents instead of puppets serpent does just kind of seem like a better puppet just like all the way around instead of having you know it's puppets always one mana you can have this be one mana if you want but it's just it does seem a lot more powerful and impressive than puppet looks like this can do a whole lot more for you So yeah, I'll, yeah. If we're going, if we're, if you're kind of sticking with this kind of same thing, I think Serpent is better than Puppet. Steel Overseer doesn't doesn't help. We're not, we're playing hardly any. We have hardly any artifact creatures. Steel Overseer, I mean, it pumps itself, I guess. So yeah, I guess I guess it pumps it. Overseer like you know makes itself a two two then a three three. But I guess if you're if you're trying to go serpent, if you want to go like serpent overseer and start actually playing artifact creatures and then play like Sahili. So y'all are saying play like this instead of gargoyle. I mean, I don't I wish gargoyle could block. I wish it was like if they had seven cards it blocked. But it doesn't. So I don't, yeah, maybe maybe you can get creatures out with Sahili, and then maybe you can pump your creatures. Because like I mean, even just you know doing that a, a couple of times could could really help. So even even if we like this looks like we have a lot better defense of just like having some one ones that can block steel overseer can activate this thing can have reach get some counters with overseer also. Um, midnight clock. I mean, I like Chromatic Lantern turning on Golos, but I I could definitely see playing one Midnight Clock over the fourth Lantern, because once you have one Lantern in play, you don't really need, like, the second Lantern doesn't help as much, so I could see playing one Midnight Clock over a Lantern. Um, yeah, the, the Gargoyle just didn't didn't help. Yeah, the, the size of the artifacts, I know the size of the artifacts doesn't matter too much whenever we're trying to win with Tezzeret, but having larger creatures makes it easier to block. That's what our deck really struggled with, was blocking. Yeah, I, I expect, 
I, I basically expect this card to be three mana tap add blue with the rest of this text mattering one out of like, you know, 15 times it's on the battlefield kind of thing. I, I don't expect that other text to do hardly anything. So maybe maybe Lantern just turning all these things into blue lands is just better, and you just want the Lanterns. But that's what I'm saying. Like maybe one clock over that, but yeah, I wouldn't expect that to do. You know, it's gonna have ups. It's gonna have upside at at times in some weird games, but not not hardly ever. Yeah, I mean, Karn is another option to turn these things into two twos, I guess. I don't really like the Manifold Key. I would rather just have more Golden Egg and Guild Globe. Golden Eggs and Guild Globes are good. I liked the Wishing Well, too. I, I would rather even just have... If you want one mana artifacts, I'd rather play more Wishing Wells than this key. I don't think that that's really important on tapping the Forge. I think having these things... that cycle through your deck is more important. So yeah, Serpent does give you something to block a, a flyer. So that's actually nice. So we're actually getting like defense in here now. This is actually looking a little better where we got some defense. Another wishing well. Get another one mana thing in there. Yeah, there's mobilized districts in here. That could that could do some work. You know, maybe even a, a third Sahili, but I don't know. So yeah, those are those are some stuff to think about there. Um, I Ugin is is pretty awesome. Yeah, honestly, we should be playing an Ugin. We really should have an Ugin, because Ugin Mystic Forge. That's that's the card. Yeah, because Ugin. Because like Ugin making these things cost two less. You get to just cast it, the, them for free off the top with your Mystic Forge, and you can like trigger Sahili a bunch. If you're casting stuff for free. Um, so like if you play an Ugin. Or even two. Tugin. Ugin's so good. You actually probably want Guild Globe. More than. Uh, more than Wishing Well. With Ugin. Because you can you can like go crazy with with like Ugin with Golden Egg Guild Globe and Mystic Forge like you can you know you can and like if you have a Sahelian play you're just making an artifact for each one like that that sounds like a whole lot more powerful than the things we were doing there yeah that doesn't matter that the Ugin creatures aren't aren't artifacts but at least Ugin gives you removal also where you can actually destroy like a Crackling Drake or whatever you know like destroy something destroy a Garrick gives you removal. Being able to just, like, you can, because, you know, like, the thing about these cards, it's like, if you don't play Wishing Well, if you play these instead, the thing about, like, Golden Egg and Guild Globe is, like, sometimes you, like, you want to play, like, these things early and stuff, and then, like, later on, you don't want to spend two mana on them too much. Well, if you can just kind of hold them in hand, and then you you slam your Ugin, and then you just get to unload all of these and just draw a bunch of cards. Emery was, Emery looked really good, honestly. Emery looked really good. Being able to just recast these artifacts in the graveyard. I liked Emery. It's because, like, removal. Like, they they kill your Mystic Forge, kill your Golos. You know, they'll kill your Steel Overseer, your Serpent. And then you, you just replay these things after they after they kill them. So then they're like, ugh, I have to kill your Emery. Because if I don't, then you just get your Golos back that I'm trying to kill. But I think we would we'd definitely cut a Golos to be able to fit this Ugin. I don't know where we fit the, other, the second Ugin in. Um... Maybe you'll only play two Tezzeret because you have like the Uga, you have like all this other win con stuff now also. Maybe you can just go get away with like two and two there. 
Yeah, we talked about Shimmer Dragon. Um, I do like Shimmer Dragon. The thing is, we can't play infinite sixes, and I think both of these sixes are more important. I think Ugin's better than Shimmer Dragon. I think Tezzeret is, obviously. So I don't know if we can fit a Shimmer Dragon in here also, but yeah, Shimmer Dragon's cool. Um... Yeah, like maybe we don't need all the lanterns. I don't know. The lanterns are kind of nice. Like honestly, getting getting to these things, it's pretty nice. You can use a lot of mana later on. But lanterns could be wishing wells and stuff too. But yeah, it, maybe a, a lantern can get cut for a Sahili also and, and stuff like that. Ugh. I liked the Golos. I liked that. Um, I liked the Lantern Golos. Like, you know, like Golos is a good blocker, and that's like what our deck needs is blockers. It's a good blocker. The ec the extra mana is certainly useful, especially since Mystic Forge doesn't hit land drops for you. So, like, hit, ha hitting land drops can be tough. This this should help, of course, but like Golos helps there. And then, yeah, you, you know, have the Lantern in play, you get to activate. We have, like, this is a good deck for activating because we don't have dead cards. You know, like, we don't have, like, you activate Golos and then you hit legion's end you know we don't we don't have anything that's dead anything you hit off of golos you just play right away so like this is a good golos deck in that sense um you can't possibly take out any lands from this deck we have 24 which is the bare minimum that this deck could play you can't possibly take out any lands you will not you'll not have even like three lands and you'll lose don't don't cut lands whether there's different lands to play, if there's better lands to play, maybe. I didn't like these Demir Guild Gates at all. Yeah, I didn't, didn't like the Demir Guild Gates in the slightest. Um, between Lanterns and even, like, the eight lands. Like, we have enough black sources, but I guess I guess you need more black sources for these things. I don't know. I didn't really like them. There's probably something better to be doing. Like this deck, this deck can be playing basics and the fetch land, honestly. Whatever the name of the fetch land is, like this deck, this deck should be playing fetch lands because of Mystic Forge. So Fabled Passage. This this should probably just have like more basics and fetches. You know. Uh, you can't cast Serpent off Golos. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, sorry. I guess I guess Serpent. I forgot about that. But, yes, Serpent's a 0-0, zero, zero, so no, you can't cast Serpent off of Golos. Hey, Chief Seth. Um, maybe one Karn's Bastion to grab with Golos if you want, if you have, like, Steel Overseer doing stuff. But does that, that wouldn't be a focus of the mana base. Like, maybe one. I'm also fine. You know, it's probably zero, but maybe one as far as Karn's, Karn's Bastion's. Yeah, a lot of options to explore in this kind of stuff. So, all right, yep, we can get going. So that was some good discussion there um, over some Demir artifacts. Uh, games didn't go super well for us, but had a lot of lot of good ideas and um, and everything there. All right, cool. Cool. Thanks, Julius. Yep. Lots of things to, to try out there. All right. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, one, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. But then two, don't forget to, or sorry, not don't forget to, but please uh, leave some comments. You know, let me know what you think of like uh, these kind of changes, that kind of stuff, uh, what you do here, maybe what you do for the mana base, all that kind of stuff. What, what do you want in a sideboard of a deck like this as well? All of that. So leave some comments um, there. But that's it here for Demir Artifacts. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.